Hello and welcome to Doctor Networks. My name is Eman Mukhtar and we're beginning a free CCNA course now and with module 2 or module 2 switching in the wireless and the first lecture we're, what we're going to be going through is understanding the VLANs. So first off we're going to see what are the foundations of the VLANs. Uh, that's the first thing that we're going to be looking at and then we will be moving on to the characteristics of a simple switch and that means a, that you go to the store and you buy a you know like a small five dollar switch or maybe I don't know what does it cost but a small switch what are the benefits you don't get with that and some are the some are the benefits you do get with that so let's jump in and see uh, what are the VLAN foundations Okay, VLAN foundations. We're going through this, uh, uh, this slide of the VLAN foundations. Um, why do you need VLANs in the first place? Um, now, a better truth over here right now is you can survive without the VLANs. It's just they're so convenient and extremely useful actually if you have VLANs in your environment and you should have VLANs if you don't have. But I have seen a lot of customers um, in my life in my career that don't have a VLAN and they're surviving but the problem eventually comes up on their side that they cannot scale their network well first off what does it do in the first place well first thing is logical separation of users or department so you have a department you have an HR you have a sales department and they have obviously users inside of them and we're gonna represent the VLANs with a coloring code like this is the blue color code the green uh, the red one and there's also a green one that doesn't really exist doesn't have any users but that's a lonely VLAN out there I'm gonna be representing the color with the VLAN so first of all logical separation of users immediately if you have some PCs connected towards your switch and by the way this is a real world switch and uh, like you have these ports connected um, this and this guy connected uh, towards the blue VLAN, uh, blue VLAN immediately you get isolation meaning that the, the blue guys can't talk to the green guy uh, sorry red guys anymore these red guys let me just uh, get them in red these red guys are isolated to only the red guys meaning they can only talk to each other and they can't talk to the blue guys so immediately there is an isolation first off so security parameter is there a little bit already and the other thing that just comes hand in hand with that is the segments broadcast domain you know like these VLANs we've heard this a term a lot of uh, the time that it segments the broadcast domain that means when once I have the logical group separation which I have right now only the blue can talk to the blue what can happen is if this blue guy sends a broadcast domain over its Ethernet link, it's uh, the switch, the switch immediately sends that broadcast to only the blue ports. It doesn't send towards the red ports or the green ports or any other port, only those ports that have that VLAN enabled on them, even if it's a trunk port that we will talk about. Only if that trunk port has that VLAN allowed, then only then it's allowed to go through. I mean, look at this. You have optimization already, and you're just making VLANs up. So let's just clear that up. Um, so we got two points set up, so we get that. And the third point is subnet correlation. Now, what it is, now, if you're in a design point of view and you're doing a designing of a network, it's obviously a very good consideration that you should have one-to-one -one correspondence of the VLAN with the subnet. Meaning, if I have this VLAN blue, by the way, VLANs are numbered, not colored, so, but I'll say VLAN X, whatever the number is, I'll give the subnet, every use, every PC on that subnet will get um, an IP from this subnet, 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So we'll, they will get one, two, three, and all, and so, so on and so forth. And I'll say the red guys, uh, the red guys will be VLAN X, I'll say. It will be 192.168.20.0 slash 24. 
So immediately I have this one-to-one -one correspondence with the VLAN number or the color in this case with the subnet. And this is what Cisco recommends that you do and you should do it because, oh man, this is for sanity sake, you should have a correspondence so that you would know that, okay, this VLAN blue, uh, this VLAN blue is, is my wireless VLAN. The users coming in from this this subnet or VLAN is my wireless subnet. This is my voice subnet. This is my data. I mean, so on and so forth. So you must have that correlation because it, it helps you in scaling your network as you grow. The third and the most important point that people all the time emphasize on is is access control. What it is 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 the access control they're always searching. I've, I get this question a lot that why do you need VLANs and the number one answer that anyone gives is access control. Now how does that really happen? Well that is because of the isolation we just made. Uh, only red guys can talk to the red, right? Only blue can talk to the blue. But there comes a time when the red has to talk to the blue. There is no other chance but these guys need to talk to each other. But we have them in isolated mode so we need them to talk to each other now what do we do now we have a routed device in between a routed device has you could assume that it has one port from the red one and one port oh this is a magical port have having two links connected to it i'll just scratch that and i'll say okay this one it has one port from the blue vlan or and from the red vlan it's it's actually a valid design to have physical ports like that and this is called inter VLAN routing so what happens is these red guys will send packets towards the router which is their default gateway by the way and they will communicate to the blue guys via the blue link that the router possesses and in between here just right here this is a router or it could be L3 switch we could apply access control policies here this is this is your access list that we will uh, we will know <laughs> we will study later on, but here we could apply some filtering, um, some basic filtering. We could do that over here right now. So the third part, the fifth part actually, is the quality of service. Most forgotten this is, but it's still out there. You must have uh, your voice specifically and video. Your phones, your phones, and you now you have you know telephonic uh, uh, teleconferencing devices and your WebEx sessions, and you may have some video call going on between your sites. So your phones obviously will be in a separate VLAN. I'll say uh, VLAN green. They're in green VLAN. So you, if you have this segregation, you could apply quality of service markings and classifications based on their color or VLAN number. So there's a lot of benefits of having the VLANs and I'm now gonna show you that what if you don't have a switch that supports VLANs. Okay, we've come to the second slide and the last slide this is that we have a normal switch that we buy for our houses and sometimes, and a lot of the times, if we are on a budget crunch in our company, we go ahead and buy a switch that is somewhat like this. This is a TP-Link switch and this is a 5 port uh, TP-Link switch and uh, what benefits do I get? Obviously there are some benefits that uh, of that switch. Uh, obviously I get the ports I need. Uh, the first benefit that I get and this is the first and foremost benefit I think is that I have one collision domain per port. That means that when I connect it to my laptop or computer I can send and receive data at the same time most probably I have a full duplex. We don't have, live in the half du duplex kind of a world right now. So you get the full duplex, you get the collision domain per port. So this is good, at least, uh, better than a hub. Um, but the problem is, this is the this is the, this is the first issue that I, I, I encountered. The broadcast is sent to all ports, meaning obviously. Uh, you have a switch that doesn't support VLAN, so you don't have any logical separation between uh, different ports. You can't make this kind of an environment. Oh, look at that. Uh, wait, wait a second. Blue, blue. You can't make those VLANs now. So what's going to happen? Well, 
First off, everyone can talk to everyone. There is no logical separation. See, everyone will be on the same subnet, uh, and this is the point actually. One subnet for the whole switch, because you just assume, you just assume that you only have one VLAN on this switch, and you can't make any other VLAN, so what's gonna happen? Well, based on that one-to-one -one correlation theory, you can only have one subnet on this switch, so that's what it is. And the broadcast is gonna send to all of them, it means if this guy sends a broadcast, on this port, it's gonna go out every single port in the switch that it has because our broadcast domain is one. We can't break the them via VLAN, so obviously it goes to everywhere. And no limit, no delimited access. Meaning, if even if you have a Cisco switch here and you just toss it right there and it has a default VLAN, uh, let me just clear this up. A Cisco switch, if you just toss it right there in your closet and say, I'm just gonna make it work. So every single port of it is in VLAN 1 and it supports some features that you could, uh, you know, like you can utilize by limiting the access, uh, access between uh, the devices that reside on the same broadcast domain or the same subnet. You could do that to some extent by using vacals and packles and things like that. But the problem is it's highly unscalable. I mean, it becomes a worse nightmare for anyone, just like static routing. It becomes a nightmare at, at some point in time. So it's not obviously recommended. So there it is. Yeah, but I've seen environments running with just one VLAN and huge environments, I would say. Um, so, Thank you for watching and I hope this has been informative for you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.